We lost one of the true greats just the other day. Steve Albini passed away May 7, 2024 of a heart attack in the studio where he built so much of his legacy. Steve had his hands in some of the most earth-shattering underground rock around, one of the most well-known being in utero by Nirvana. Rarity here on my channel showing a cassette. The impact of this album cannot be understated, and neither can the work of Steve Albini. Whether it was behind the board during recording sessions, as a producer, as an engineer, or taking on pretty much any other role in the studio, Albini's impact is something that simply cannot be ignored. In today's video, I'm going to dig into some of the lesser-known greats that Albini had his hands in, all pulled from my collection, some that I was kind of surprised about. But first, he was also a recording artist and musician. Here is his album 1000 Hertz, released in 2000, and it is kind of this very interesting box set, even though it just has the one LP in it. And then you have this, 2007's Exquisite Italian Greyhound. Shellac is set to release their latest album called To The Trains on May 17, 2024. It's unfortunate that Albini is not around to see its release. From 1000 Hertz, you can look at the song title from Opener Prayer to God and contrast that with the brutality of the lyrics, and it kind of can give you a sense of who Steve Albini was and the impact and controversy he had as an artist and in the studio. It shows how he almost forcefully went against the grain in everything he did. This seemed to be his mantra regardless of where he sat in the process. All right, let's dig into my collection. We're gonna go chronologically. We started with 1993 and Nirvana's In Utero. Let's dig into the next one from 1999. This is Secret Name by the band Low. They're kind of a slow core, almost dreamy at times, pop group, husband and wife duo. Mimi sadly passed away a few years ago from cancer. This is, like I said, from 1999 on Cranky Records. I've talked about Low from time to time here on my channel. And production is something I've specifically called out ad nauseum about their final album, Hey What? But way back in 1999, when they were on Cranky, they worked with Albini right here on Secret Name. And like the more current production, this does make Lowe stand out. It's minimalist. It has elements of folk, which you don't find on all of Lowe's albums, and it is really good. On to 2002, this is Godspeed You, Black Emperor, and the album Yankee UXO. This highly experimental post-rock band from Canada is vastly instrumental with non-traditional rock instruments like woodwinds and strings. They blend traits of classical music and composition with deep roots within rock with your standard guitar, drums, etc. Not always the easiest, most accessible listen, Godspeed You is still surprisingly good. Next is Songs Ohio and Magnolia Electric Company from 2003 on Secretly Canadian. So I was surprised to see that Albini had his hands in so much of Jason Molina's work. Looking at something like Godspeed You Black Emperor and Nirvana's In Utero, and you get these massive sounds, but then Albini's ability to rein it in for something truly minimalist like Lowe's Secret Name or literally anything by Jason Molina, and it's just stunning. This indie folk Americana type album takes its name of two of Jason Molina's projects. One is Songs Ohio and the other being Magnolia Electric Company, which he transitioned to after the release of this album. Songs Ohio was actually pretty much the catalyst of the creation of Secretly Canadian Records, and hands down you must listen to the song Farewell Transmission. Speaking of Magnolia Electric Company, two years later he would release this, what Comes After the Blues in 2005. This saw Molina maintaining a 
bit of minimalism, but expanding more into rock sensibilities. Again, Albini's hand made for the perfect transition. And the song I'd recommend checking out here is The Dark Don't Hide It. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and say that if you want to listen to these songs, I do frequently post things down in my Substack. You can subscribe down in the description, it's free, and you can do a little bit deeper dive and get more personal with my collection there. And next we have Electrolane and The Power Out from 2004, and then their album Axes from 2005, both on two pure records. I think Electrolane is probably one of the most underrated bands on this list. Blending experimentalism with post-rock, the band names some of their influences as Sonic Youth, Stereolab, to New and The Velvet Underground. They were a British band active from 1998 to 2012 with a little bit of a hiatus in the middle there. On The Power Out, I would say check out This Deed and off Axes, check out Bells. No stranger to post-rock. Now we have Mono and Him to the Immortal World on Temporary Residence from 2009. This was not the only mono album that Albini had his hands in, but it is the only one in my collection. And again, post-rock seems to be a common theme through Albini's work, at least in my collection. And yes, here's another. Mono is a Japanese post-rock band, and like Godspeed earlier, is predominantly instrumental. It's dark, it's moody, and similar to contemporaries like Explosions in the Sky, they have this dynamic range of minute, barely audible melodies that can swell into this incredible noise. Super fascinating one, that. Taking it down a notch is Bonnie Prince Billy and Now Here's My Plan from 2012. Albini produced a few things by Will Oldham, including this release, which is an EP, a few under his own name, and at least one release by his group Palace. I've always liked this EP, and in particular, the track I See a Darkness. Only a few more left, and this one is Cloud Nothings with Attack on Memory from Car Park Records in 2012. I remember when this was released, and it seemed so radical at the time, about half a dozen years too late, in that it pulled in some traits that were almost screamo. Yet in the indie world, it still pushed full force into underground popularity, which just seemed so counterintuitive at the time. A truly brilliant post-rock album with hints of emo, garage, and lo-fi. And finally, we have Ty Siegel with his self-titled 2017 album and Freedom's Goblin from 2018. Now, Freedom's Goblin, Albini only had a hand in recording a few of the tracks, but I'm including it in this list anyway because it is that phenomenal. I have quite the collection of Ty Siegel albums, and I feel he's one of the better, lesser-known artists you could truly call prolific. His creative output is pretty continuous and really, really good. What albums in your collection did Albini have his hands in? Let me know down in the comments or tag me in a video that you create yourself covering Albini and his work. As one person said many moons ago and someone more recently, Gary. This dude's a damn nerd. I am Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.